Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very first episode of Benjamin Magnus Plays Kerbal Space Program. Now, I've decided to do a series on Kerbal Space Program because the most recent update added something I was very interested in, which I will show you right here in just a second. And if you don't know what Kerbal Space Program is, it is an indie game you can pick up on Steam for, I believe, $26.99 or your regional equivalent. And this right here is what I'm super excited to try out, and that is the career mode, which has funds, reputation, and science all conglomerated down into one big bit of fun. And let's just throw in a name here, Benjamin Magnus, like always. Oh, not like that, like that. And we're going to pick a flag, and I like, I like this flag right here, I think. We're going to go with that. We're going to overwrite an old file. I did play a little bit off screen just to get my head wrapped around things so I wasn't blundering through the beginning stages here. And now I'm just going to show you really quick. This right here is the funds you'll be using. You start out with 10,000. Some people like to call it roots because the, si the currency symbol here looks like the square root symbol. I've just, In my head, I've just been calling it Kerbin currency. This is your reputation. And this is just a little a meter to show you how much science you have right now. And this building is the new one right here. This is where you can grab contracts. And as you can see right here, there are a couple contracts. Launch a new vessel. And it shows you how difficult it is, what you need to do to, do, uh, to complete it, uh, how much money they're going to give you in advance, how much money you'll get, uh, how much money, science, and reputation you'll get on completion, and what it'll cost you if you fail. And we're not going to fail launching a new vessel, so we're definitely going to grab this one. And we're going to grab this set and altitude record, too, of 5,000 meter. We're going to grab both of those and head straight out over here. This is where you build your ships. And first things first, I'm just going to throw in a, a, a command pod and launch that. And I'll show you why in just a very second. It's just because we need some science. And there's an easy way to grab a little bit of science right off the bat. As soon as this loads, come on. Come on, you know you want to. Alright, I might have to edit out load times in the future. Alright, so what, now what we can do is just get a crew report. Keep that data. Do an EVA. Uh, let's see, take a surface sample. The surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of a conspicuous green substance. We're going to keep that data. We're going to do an EVA report. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here. No, it was not. We're going to keep that data as well. Go right back to our pod. Board it and recover the vessel. And the reason we did that is because it's just an easy, easy, easy bit of science to get right off the bat. And as you can see, we have this little, uh, this little panel here. It shows us how much science we get gathered from everything, the parts we used, and how much money we got back from them, and how our crew did gained reputation for that good job and if you don't know what all this stuff is it's it's pretty simple this is where you launch rockets where you launch planes build rockets build planes i showed you that's where you get contracts this is like your crew center where you can get information on your curbins this is uh the science center where you do do your research and that's a tracking center right there and we're just going to build an actual rocket now and launch it right off the bat so we can do uh let's see i know it shows you contracts ah here it is to launch it, we're going to do these two, launch a new vessel, achieve an altitude uh, record, and the way we're going to do that is just put a cheap solid fuel booster on there. We are going to add a parachute, and we're going to launch this guy. Okay, launch. And like I just said, I will probably end up just editing out these loading screens to save time on my episodes, because they're a little bit longer than I really like. Especially when you're doing a lot of little things. Okay, and uh, I believe T, yep, it's T turns on SAS, which is basically a little automated system to try to keep you pointing in the same direction as best you can. So we're going to launch. We're going to uh, enable that, and then we're just going to launch. Oh, and we can see I already made a mistake. Uh, yeah, when you make mistakes in this game, they generally tend to be hilarious in nature. Like this. My rocket's clearly going nowhere because I launched the rocket and the parachute at the exact same time. And we're just going to revert back to the launch because I'll show you exactly what I did wrong there. 
I mean, when I first played this game, it was when there was a little bit more basic. I blew up so many rockets. And the problem right here is the staging. All we need to do is add in another stage and separate these two. Now, if we launch the rocket, there we go. Now, we're heading in a straight line, straight up, going very fast. And right here, you can see we completed a contract, which was launch a new vessel. And as soon as we get to 5,000 meters, we will have completed the other contract. They'll give us money, and we'll be able to get some science. Actually, we should be able to get some science right now from this. Take a crew report. The shores look inviting, and you watch the, show, the, the waves roll by. We're going to keep this data. We don't even have a transmitter on this guy. Completed that contract because we got way, way above 5,000 meters, which is nice. Look at Jebediah. He looks ecstatic. And now we're just going to speed up time a little bit because it'll take a while to, you know, get up to our our peak altitude, which is pretty high. We got up to 18,200 meters just on this one little engine right here. And we're going to wait till we're a little bit lower in the atmosphere to launch the parachute. I'm not sh sure how the parachute physics work. I think you can pretty much launch it when, uh, deploy the parachute whenever you want, and it should be fine. All right, we're going to deploy the parachute. Falling pretty fast. As you can see, it does put some, even when it's not deployed, when it's collapsed like that, it does... Uh, put some drag on you. You can see my speed is slowing down, and we don't need to keep that open. I already did a crew report. Looks like we're not we're, we we're not going to land directly where we launched from, but it's pretty damn close. I mean, we didn't get very far, did we? But that wasn't the point. The point was just to complete a couple contracts, get a little bit more money, get a little bit more science, so we can do more fun things in the future. I'm not going to do it right now, but I know you can take an e you can do an EVA when you're floating down like this. But I think floating at 7.9 meters per second, I think is too fast. And I think what would probably happen is Jebediah would fall off and plummet to his death. And whatever you do, you do not want to keep this, to the time sped up, while you're, uh, you know, doing anything important. So we can just, uh, now we're going to do an EVA. Just, oh, let go. Let go, there we go. Just take a EVA report. I don't think a spacesuit is necessary to get there either. We're going to take a surface sample. This is what makes scientists yell at us when we go into the labs without cleaning our boots first, otherwise known as dirt. And like I was saying, if you if you uh, have it sped up when you hit the ground or something like that, even if normally it would be perfectly fine, just the way the game's set up, it, you'd probably explode. Okay, and now we have a little bit more science. We earned 17.9 science that mission. Very good. We got most of the parts back, 98% of the value of what we used we got back, and the crew gained a little bit more reputation. And as you can see, now I have 18,828 roots or curb and currency. We have a little bit more reputation. As you can see, this bar is starting to move this, or the, the bar is starting to move so into the green. And we have some science. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use some of that science to unlock more modules. And this is the science screen. As you can see, we start right here. This, uh, this is the technology we start out with. There's only one place to go, which is basic rocketry. And we're going to use five science points to get the basic rocketry. And we still have 32.8 left over. So let's take a look at these. We got general rocketry, which is a new engine, a Septron 1, which is a little tiny, tiny engine, and a big old solid fuel booster. We got some aerodynamic stuff right here, a cone, a winglet, and a decoupler, which I'll show you later, and survivability, which is one more engine, some landing struts, and a radial mounted parachute. And what we're going to do first is grab this guy right here, general rocketry, more engines, more fuel, more ambitious ideas. So we're going to research that, and I don't think we have enough left over to do anything else. No, we're going to need at least 15, we have 12.8. Close this, and now we're going to take a look at the contracts real fast. Okay, now we have some other things to test. Test a solid fuel booster while landed on Kerbin. We'll take that. That's the one we just used. It wants us to test a stack decoupler in flight over Kerbin. That will be easy. It wants us to set an altitude record of 22,000 meters. That should be easy, too, because on one little engine, we did make it up to 18,000, so that's not that much more. As you can see, all this stuff is down here. 
And this one I've always had I had trouble with when I was trying before. But test the M uh, the Mark 16 parachute in flight over Kerbin because it's usually at an awkward like altitude and awkward speed. But we'll grab it and we'll try. So we grabbed a bunch more contracts, and now what we're gonna do is try to design a spaceship so that we can, you know, complete all those contracts. And as you can see, they're they're uh, down here, and it does show you all of the. Uh, prerequisites for completing the contract uh, if you look at this little this little interface down here. So, like, uh, this guy just wants you to be on Kerbin and be landed and launch this rocket. Easy. Stacked a coupler. Let's see right here. On Kerbin while flying at these altitudes and at this speed. So what we're going to do is, I think I have it a coupler right there. We're going to put it a coupler here below my command pod. We're going to put a, hmm, let's put a liquid-fueled fuel tank right there. We're going to put on a liquid-fueled engine, and liquid-fueled engines differ in solid fuel in that you can uh, change how much thrust you're getting. It's variable. Whereas with the solid fuel ones, all you do is turn it on, and that's it. And you turn it on, and it goes, and it goes, and goes, and goes. And this is, I'm... Pretty sure this is the one it wants us to test, the RT-10. Stacked a coupler we got. Yep, it was RT-10, so we're going to throw that guy on there right now. Alright, sorry about that. My wife just texted me. And, okay, we're going to go to the... We're, I think this should be fine. The only thing that I'm worried about is that parachute. I'm not sure if I'll be able to grab that contract right now. But it, sh it might, be it, it, if it's going to be a problem, it's going to be by my own, like, negligence, me not paying attention properly. So let's, this should be fine. Staging should be perfectly fine. All right. Now we're going to put the thrust on about two thirds so that when we do use it, it's already, it's already powered up. Turn on our SAS and we're going to launch. And as you can see, I completed a contract, which was this one. And now the next thing we're going to try to focus on is this one right here. We're going to try to use this decoupler when we're at this speed, to, uh, these altitudes and at these speeds. I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem. I think maybe getting up to that speed at that altitude might be a problem because we're already at the minimum and we're nowhere near that fast. So let's crank this guy all the way up. See if we can get our speed up. Let's try turning off to the side a little bit. Oh, no, that didn't work. Let's see, we're... Okay, try to gain some speed without gaining much altitude, because we're almost... Oh, well, we need to get to 470. Oh, now, see, now we're too high. We need to get down lower. And now we're not going fast enough. So we're going to we're gonna fall a little bit. See, this, this sometimes these are really easy, sometimes not. All right. Need to get lower. Hmm, I don't like the way this wor worked out. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. And this guy, yeah, it just wants me to be going a lot faster than I can really achieve. The only thing I, I can think to do is try to achieve that speed going sideways. Let's try it. I get up to speed. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay, that went that went smoothly. That went smoothly. I actually did manage to get all of those contracts completed. That went pretty smoothly. And the key there was to just, you know, get to the appropriate altitude, turn on my side, and then launch. And I did man. It looks like I, I hucked myself way out into the ocean, which is not going to be a bad thing because I'll be able to get some ocean samples some water samples, and that'll give me a little bit more science. And now, if I, I think if I take a crew report... Okay, I will be able to get some data on that, so we'll keep that data. Keep the data. Okay, uh, let's just speed up time while we're falling. Falling is not entertaining in any way. You just fall and fall and fall. Unless you're exploding or you're trying to land on a like extraterrestrial body, like the moon, then it's interesting. Okay, okay, definitely. Okay, put the put the speed down. 
Now, if this gets going slow enough, yeah. Now we're going slower than we were before. What I'm going to do is take an EVA, because he can hold on. We're going to take an EVA report. This is a most precarious situation. Yes, it is. We're going to keep that data, board our spaceship, and just float back down into the water. And then what we're going to do, as soon as I hit the uh, start floating around, I'm going to take another EVA and take a surface sample of the water. And like I said, when you get low, definitely put it on the base base speed of one here. You do not want to hit the ground while you have the time sped up. You really only want to speed up the time while you're traveling kind of statically, not when you're doing any sort of transitions. And it looks like there's no, there's no, sh oh, there's a shadow on the water. Oh, no, there wasn't. Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't, I don't know. Okay, uh, do an EVA. Let go of our pod here. We're going to take a surface sample. You've taken a sample of the water. It appears to dra dramatically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. Indeed it does. All right, we're going to board our... Oh, come on. Whoa. Hello, physics. Come on, grab. All right, come on. Board. There we go. That was a little bit of a foible, but recover the vessel. Okay, that, that loaded really quickly. That was nice. We got 21.9 more science. That was great. The most, the most came from the surface sample of Kerbin's water right there. We got 96.8% of the value of our parts back. Very good. And the crew, Jebediah, gained 25 more reputation for a total of 132. And as you can see, this is moving up. We have more money. We have more science. So we're definitely going to go out and grab some more science. Now, what do we want to get? I think the next thing I want to get... Hmm. Thinking. I kind of... I don't know. I can't splurge and get the, ro the, base, the advanced rocketry yet. So let's go with let's go with survivability for now because that one was cheap. What else do we got? We got science tech, which is rechargeable batteries, a science experimental engineering group. Okay, I know what that is. I'll show you later. And a data transmitter, flight control. Nothing I really want there at the moment, and they are kind of expensive at forty-five. So let's just grab stability as well. Get it out of the way. And now we've at least got this tier finished. That's pretty good. And looks like we're starting to run about as long as I wanted to go on this episode. And it was actually a little bit more successful than I thought I would be able to do. I completed all of the contracts I grabbed pretty easily. I had a lot of trouble doing some of those before. Getting to the appropriate height at the appropriate speed and then deploying the parachute, things like that. If you've enjoyed this episode, drop me a like. It is a big help. If you have played Kerbal as well, feel free to drop me any tips or tricks in the form of a comment. Comment, And if you are interested in more daily Benjamin Magnus Plays Kerbal Space Program, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.